U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein passed away last night, and her death leaves two things. An incredible legacy as a trailblazer, an icon, a leader who made significant contributions to American government and protecting American values. And it also leaves a critical question that will have ramifications for America for years to come. Will Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans exploit her passing to prevent President Biden from appointing any more judges for the rest of his term? I just talked about both questions with Jason Sattler, a former USA Today political contributor and well-known online presence as LOL GOP. In terms of Dianne Feinstein's legacy, we noted a few things, including a few facts you may not have heard before. There was all kinds of things where she was the first in the Senate. She was tied to LGBT rights before. That was something that was a a big thing in California. She led the the country on that. She led the country on being very clear against assault weapons. She led the country when she did the CIA torture report. She had tried to run for mayor in San Francisco and a, a bomb was planted at her. And yet she persisted. She announced that she was done. At at, at age 45, she felt she was washed up. Two hours later was when Harvey Milk was shot. In the total confusion after the shooting, the president of the Board of Supervisors, Dianne Feinstein, spoke. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. The suspect is Supervisor Van White. And out of that experience, She decided, no, I'm staying in this. She was San Francisco's mayor for 10 years. She ran against Pete Wilson in 1990 and she lost and yet she persisted. And she won a special election for his old Senate seat in 1992. The thing that really stood out to me was the moral courage she then displayed in the late 2000s when she was determined to expose the truth of what the United States had done to prisoners at Guantanamo Bay. Then we moved on to the more difficult and uncomfortable question. Is it realistic that Mitch McConnell will try to cynically exploit her death for partisan advantage? And we both concluded that the answer is yes. Here's why. You need 60 votes to reconstitute a committee when you're in mid-session. Republicans kept a seat open for over a year when Antonin Scalia died to deny Democrats control of the, the Supreme Court. What happens then if you don't have that seat filled you can't put any judge through at all. Now, with 50 votes or 50 plus one with the vice president, you can basically do anything in the Senate. The question there is, are there 50 plus one votes? Does the Senate break down that much where there aren't 10 Republicans who do things that, if this happens, it breaks the Senate forever. This is the issue that came up when Senator Feinstein had a prolonged post-shingles recovery that kept her away from the Senate for several months. Democrats proposed a temporary replacement on the Judiciary Committee, and Republicans blocked it. They would not agree to it. And given the Senate map in 2024, and the fact that it so advantages the Republican Party, there is a good chance that he's going to look at the polling data and say, we are not going to pay an election penalty for doing this. And then I would also just submit as a piece of evidence, look at what's happening this week. Just yesterday, the Republicans held the most shameful hearing in the history of the U.S. House, their trumped up impeachment inquiry without a shred of evidence with Republicans themselves saying, we have nothing to stand on here. We're just doing this to muddy the waters for Donald Trump. And tomorrow, there's an almost 100% certainty that they're going to shut down the U.S. government again because Donald Trump believes that by doing that, it will slow down the prosecutions and trials that he is facing on the 91 felony counts that he's been indicted under. He's wrong about that. It will not slow those things down. And Republicans know that, but they're doing his bidding anyway. So we're right to be concerned here that they might do this maneuver and not seat a new senator on judiciary and try to bottle up all Biden judges through the re-elect in in 2024. Mitch McConnell could very easily look at that and say, there is no political downside for me here because either Democrats succeed in making this change and then I inherit it in a year. And now I control a Senate where precedent is a bare majority gets to do whatever the hell we want with no restraint or Democrats fail, but the Senate is in chaos. And Whenever there's chaos, what voters hear is it's a plague on both their houses. It's a mess. They don't like it. And they punish the party in charge. It does not 
help Democrats. I don't want to normalize this. This is something that shouldn't even be a debate. That's another thing is we shouldn't be talking about this now because we should be marking the, the legacy of Dianne Feinstein. We shouldn't be talking about this because we should have a functional Republican Party. Look, I hope we're wrong about this. Let's all hope that the better angels will prevail on McConnell and the Senate Republicans to do what's right. That would be the most fitting tribute that they could make to the legacy of Senator Dianne Feinstein.